over your will. Having power, Having power over your will. I want you to listen to me very carefully and you'll understand where I'm coming from. Listen to me very carefully. Don't turn me off at any time because truly this message is designed to be a blessing for you. <laughs> Having power over your will. Yes. Everybody that lives upon this earth, you have a free will. Yes. And your will is that part of you that grants you the ability to choose and to make your own choices. But if you are not very careful, having your own free will can become a detriment to you. In other words, it can cause you some trouble. But you must always understand that God is going to hold you responsible as far as keeping your own free will in check. God could have made you out of a puppet and just pulled you just like how someone manipulates a puppet. God could have made you and created you to become a puppet, but no. God gave you the freedom to choose. And your will is that part of you that grants you the ability to choose and to make choices. Do I have anybody here that can make choices? Let me see a show of hands. So that means that you are with me so far. Your will is that part of you that grants you the ability to choose and make choices. But if you are not very, very careful, that free will that you have, it can become a detriment to you. And God is going to hold you responsible for whether or not you keep your own free will in check. This is why it is paramount that you gain mastery over your own free will. Because the devil is going to use your will against you to call you to make choices that can be detrimental to your life and your soul. The devil ain't your friend, brothers and sisters. Satan is not your friend. Demons are not your friends. And so well, that's what God has given you. The freedom to choose. The devil can infiltrate your mind, if you will, because you can't see him. And he can use your own free will against you to make choices that can damage your life and be detrimental to your soul. Do I have a witness in one? Now if the question was asked, do you have power over your will? Most of us would say yes. I have power over my will. See, but the truth of the matter is, you have the potential to exercise power over your will. But far too often, we falter in this regard. Let me see if I break it down so you can understand. You would say that yes, I have power over my will. I can will to do this. I can will to say yes, but I should say yes. And I can will to say no, but I should say no. But far too often, we falter in this regard. In other words, when you should say no, you're saying yes. And when you should say yes, you're saying no. Do I have a witness? And, and so, if you are born again, you're not supposed to be subject to your own will. 
Your will is to be subject to you. Pastor Reese, how can this be accomplished and how can this be achieved? See, first of all, you have become a new creation in Christ. Yeah. And there is power that is abiding in you that goes beyond your comprehension. But since you have never tapped into it and don't realize that the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he has given you the power to exercise power over your own will. So when the time comes, you can say no. And when the time comes, you can say yes. How many folk do we have in here will say yes to something that you know that you should have said no to? How many folk in here do we have that, that said yes and no when you should have said no and yes? Go have a witness in the one. So did. Yeah. You have the power within you to exercise power over your own will. My will shouldn't have power over me. I shouldn't be rather subject to my will. My will should be subject unto me. In other words, I call the shots in this house. Do I have a witness? Do we have anybody that lives in the house? Do you, is that strange just calling shots in your house? Or do you call the shots in your house? And so then, God sees you as his house. You are the temple of God, and the Spirit of God dwells in you. So then, you are not to be subject to your will. Your will should be subject to you. Do I have a witness, anyone? So this is why it's necessary. As a matter of fact, it's, it's, it's paramount. It's vital for you somehow, some way, to gain mastery over your will so that you can follow God the way that he should be modeled, followed. Did you not know that there are roadblocks in your way when you're trying to follow God? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. There are roadblocks. But you have the Holy Spirit there to warn you. Yeah. Trouble ahead. Mm -hmm. But many of us we walk right on into it. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because we have not mastered our own will. Mm -hmm. And Pastor, you know, uh, are you saying something that, that's, that's unobtainable? No, I'm not. I would preach something to you that's unobtainable. You can't have mastery over your will. Let me put it this way. On Sunday morning, do you think that I feel like getting up every Sunday morning, coming and teaching, getting in my car, driving to church, and preaching to some folk that don't want to listen? You see, the reason why I do it is because I have power over my will. As a matter of fact, I can do what I want to do. I can go where I want to go. If I want to go to China, I can. Just got to have the money to get there. <laughs> I don't have that. What's in China for me? China will spend that money on something else. So you get over there and nobody can understand what I'm saying. I won't be able to understand what they said. So guess what? That's just a waste of money if I don't have it in China. So even in little things, in little things, you have not mastered power over your will. That's why you're always in chaos. Don't know what to do. Should I do this? Or should I do that? I should have went over there. I should have went over to that place and what have you. See, but when you begin to master your will, all this chaos and all this conflict, that's going on inside of you will cease to exist. Is anybody praying with me here? Yeah. Yeah. I'm talking about having power over your will. Now when a man has learned to maintain and keep his own will in check, he is operating from a level of wisdom and knowledge that comes only from God. 
For David said, Thy word have I hid within my heart that I may not sin against my God. So let me back up. And I want you to understand what I'm saying. See, a lot of times, see, it's these simple truths in life that trip us up. So when a man has learned to maintain, listen to me now, maintain power over his will and keep it in check, he's operating in a different uh, form of knowledge. See, there is worldly knowledge, there is natural knowledge and what have you, but when a man has decided that he's going to maintain and keep his will in check, he's operating from a wisdom and knowledge that comes only from God, the written and spoken word of God. For David said, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against my God. Did you not know that I can be teaching? And to you, some of what I'm saying is just mental sense. In other words, you hear it, but you don't apply it. You hear it, but you don't apply it. I can say it over and over again. And some people still falter over what I'm saying. The reason why? Because they still haven't gotten into that spirit. Thy word have I heed. Within my heart that I may not sin against my God. Did you not know that you got to hide the word of God? Now what is the significance in hiding God's word in your heart? If you don't hide it, the devil is going to come along and steal it. So if the devil comes along and steal it, guess what? You don't have it anymore. So then if you don't have it anymore, that means that you're not going to succeed in that particular area. So therefore, you got to hide the word of God in your heart. That you may not sin against my God. So then if I got the word of God in my heart, when the enemy comes after me, guess what? He's not going to succeed because I have mastery over my own will. I wish I had somebody that's okay with me in here. See, I have master real over my will when it comes to time. Mm -hmm. Do we have anybody here always ready late? I want to know why. Do we have anybody here that can't pay, pay our bill on time? See, I'm, I'm talking about everyday stuff. I'm talking about somebody that, that, that can't maintain a checkbook and what have you. I mean, you know that my, my, my dad, Samus Reese. <laughs> He's always say some things in the day they still resonate in my spirit, even now. And he's been gone for like 35, 36 years. He used to always say things such as, a man worried is his bond. He would say things such as, time would tell the story and what have you. And he would always say, what? Always be on time. Those things that stuck with me. So therefore, if you ask me to do something, I'm gonna be on time. I'll be there before you. Why? Because I have mastery over my will in that area. See, some of these folk have got fired. I have not gotten a job, but guess what? Because they can't control their behavior when it comes to time. Hmm? Do you have any trouble with it? See, sometimes it's just a matter of leaving five minutes earlier. Hmm? Sometimes it's just a matter of getting up 15 minutes earlier. See, the fact of the matter, you can't keep doing the same thing over and over again and expect different results. They call it insanity. Go ahead, Pastor. Go ahead, take Are you listening to me? So then you have to master, you, you have to make your body behave. Your body not going to behave just because you in it. You have to make it behave. Yes, you do. My mouth, I have to control what comes out of my mouth. You see, just, just when you see me on Sunday, you say he, he, he's wearing a suit or whatever. He tried to speak correct English and all of that and whatever. But guess what? My mouth, if I permit it, would get out of control. Do we have anybody here uh -oh. that, that, you know, like when you're in, 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 in circumstances and situations, your mouth want to say something other than what came out? Hmm? See, <laughs> does that mean that you don't have mastery over your mouth? See, it didn't it did just fall out. The devil didn't just make you see it. See, it's up to you whether you master what comes out of your mouth. See, the Bible says, sweet water and bitter water should come out of the same faucet. What it's saying is that, you know, cursed men 
and pray to God said, come out and say no. Amen. Amen. Are you listening to me? Yes. 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 See, you the creation of God. Oh but yet you turn around and go to church and yet they praising God. That ought not to be. Amen. Amen. Tell the truth, Pastor. Yes. See, the reason why you haven't gained mastery over your will. You tell your will what it is. Your will don't tell you what it is. You tell it. And is that obtainable, Pastor Reese? Yes, it's obtainable. See, the fact of the matter is, you haven't made yourself that Amen. Tell the truth, Jesus. That same faith that you know you shouldn't be. Lord, have mercy. That same thing that you say, and the same way that you treat people, you shouldn't be treating people that way and what have you. Why? Because your will is mastering you. And you're not mastering your will. And like I said earlier, that you have the Holy Spirit living within you, and the Holy Spirit has brought more power that goes beyond your comprehension. Yeah. Yeah. See, when I talk about the Holy Spirit living within you, oh, he's there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He's there because God don't lie. No. Did you not know that it is an abomination for God to lie? Mm -hmm. So if God said that, that must mean that is true. Yes. Did you not know that you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit so that everything in the spirit world recognizes you? That was a seal in your forehead, exactly how it looked, I don't know. But the Bible said that you have been sealed with the spirit of truth in your forehead, letting everything in the spirit world know that you belong to God. And that's just part of what belongs to you. You have power resonating in you that causes you to be able to do stuff that normally you wouldn't be able to do. So you have to tap into that. But because we think that going to church is going to only teach us about don't fornicate, don't steal, don't lie, don't cheat on your husband, don't cheat on your wife. You know, don't cheat on your taxes. You know, we, we think that going to church is just for that or whatever. But going to church and hearing the word of God, you have to master these small things that lead up to that. Right. So when you learn how to master your will, you won't be cursing out your wife. When you learn to master your will, you won't be cursing out your husband. When you learn to master your will, you won't be taking stuff that don't belong to you. So it starts small, but if you don't stop it when it's small, it creates a larger thing. Yes, yes, yes. You're wrestling with something that you shouldn't wrestle with. Now, listen to me. As far as following God, going to church and hearing the word of God, did you not know that your, 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 your body don't want to do that? Until you get used to it. You know, after I got saved, preaching, I find myself not wanting to go to church and preach. Why? I had to get used to it. In other words, it had to become a part of me. Yes. And so when a person initially comes to God and starts going to church or what have you, getting, getting, in the church and staying, and that was another word that I'm looking for, or whatever, getting, getting, getting stable, that's not the word that I'm looking for, but anyway, I just say that for the lack of better words, to get, to get stable in the church or what have you, that's going to be difficult. Because that devil that was put out, he's trying to keep you from getting stable, so that he's trying to get you back out of the church. He has it one time, and he wants you back. Is anybody praying with me? I, I preached about Oh, a couple of weeks ago, about the devil trying to steal your soul. Yeah. The devil trying to steal your soul. Now, you know the fact of the message, somebody, someone will hear that, the announciation of that message, and say, I don't need to listen to that. But the fact of the matter is, the devil don't have to steal what already belongs to him. Right. If you're unsold, the devil don't have to steal you. You already belong to him. 
He's trying to steal them that are born again. Yes. Why are you trying to steal them? Because you were once his property, mm -hmm. wow. and Jesus came and kicked him out. Yep. He got mad, mm -hmm. so therefore he's going to watch him. You do everything, whatever, and mm -hmm. once you leave the door open, he's going to guess what? Come and steal yeah. you back. But you know he can't steal you back if you do this. Yeah. David said, "Thy word mm -hmm. have I hid in my heart yes. Yes. that I may not sin against my God." Now. Would you agree with me in this? Would you agree that walking away from God and the things of God was sin? Would, would you agree with that? Yes. Would you agree? Let me ask you again. Would you agree with me that walking away from God and the things of God was sin? But David said, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not what? Sin. sin against my God. So therefore, the word of God must get beyond not your set. Go by your ears and get down into your heart so that you can live. I'm talking about having power over your will. Is anybody listening to me now? Now watch this. When I am confronted through extreme temptations to make the wrong choice, I have power over my will to say no. Because I understand that if I make the wrong choice, it can put my life and my spirit in jeopardy. And did you not know that you can do some things that can cause harm to your body? Oh, you, what are you talking about, preacher? What can I do to cause harm to my body? She needles in your arm. Overindulge in, in alcohol, drugs, get in your car driving drunk. See, but if you're a wheel, if you have mastery over your wheel, you're not going to put no needle in your arm. You're not going to overindulge in alcohol. And God knows if you have had a drink or two, you're not going to be getting behind a wheel driving a car. Because not only will you kill yourself, you can kill somebody else. So you got to, you got to master that and say, wait a minute. Amen. Amen. Wait a minute. I can't be doing this. And I'm talking about putting the soul in jeopardy. How much do you think your soul is worth? Wow. You know, some of these folk live their lives like they don't even have a soul. Did you not know the soul will have a resting place? I'm not talking about no grave evil. See, the soul ain't going to the grave. Some people live their lives like they don't even have a soul. The soul got a resting place. Pastor Reese, what are you talking about? When you talk about the soul having a resting place, it's either in heaven or hell. See, because one, one, the thing about it, you leave in the earth. You're going to leave this planet. And what you have, the decisions, and choices that you have made in this life is going to determine whether you go up or whether you go down. The choice is yours. So can you see why it is necessary, now it's paramount, that you gain mastery over your will because there are decisions that you're going to have to make that, 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 that is going to have something to do with your soul. But when you live it, your life, I ain't worried about the afterlife. I just want to have fun and party now. I want to say you idiot. Oh, man. Oh, man. See, the fact of the matter is you're 25 now. See, one day you're going to be 65. And you're going to be thinking a whole lot different than you think now. All right. Amen. I remember y'all when I was working many years ago. And uh, I was probably 27 years old. And I worked around some older guys, and all of them had retired from the, from the railroad. And you know all of them had to be in LA, six, probably about my age now. Six days, six now, 70, 72. And uh, there was this one gentleman. He came to me, Leo. <laughs> and he said something to me. I didn't understand what he was talking about at the time. But I understand now. He came to me and said, Reese, he said, if I had 
your youth and my money, I'd be dangerous. <laughs> I'm looking at this man talking about. See, he was what he was saying was, I'm old now, but I got plenty of money. So what he was saying that if I was young like you and had the money like I have, I'd be dangerous. Are you listening to me? <laughs> so you ain't gonna always be here. And see, and, and it took me a long time to figure out what he was talking about. You know, me 20, 27, a year old or whatever. She's like, that's how come what I'm saying to some of you, some of the things that I'm saying, some of you, you probably ain't, ain't understanding what I'm saying now. But keep living. Yeah. Some of the stuff that I'm saying, you're going to be saying, that preacher said that. See, but I might not be here. See, because I understand that I'm not going to always be here. My home right. is with the Lord. But I'm going to do everything that I can to get across to you so that you can live successfully in walking with God and mastering your will is one of them. Amen. 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 And I'm, you know, so I guess I come, people that's young and got a lot of money, they get in trouble. See, because they have not learned to master that. See, first of all, money, the Bible says, after of all things. Okay, but, but yet still, money, it, 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 it asks for the wrong thing, but money can, can buy the thing too. It can, you know, buy drugs. And all that. I'm talking about the expensive stuff that will cause you to become addicted to that stuff. Okay, so by having money and being young, you still have to tell your body no to, that, to the thing that your body want to do. And so when you and I, when we are confronted, and we are going to be confronted with extreme temptations. And these temptations have come to call us to make a wrong choice. What are you going to do? I mean, it's just like I said, a temptation is not a temptation unless it feels good, taste good, smell good. See, so there ain't no temptation if it doesn't, you know, if all that don't apply to it. So it has come. And you're being tempted to do something that you know is wrong. Do you have power over your will to say no? Just this past week, if some of y'all would be honest, <laughs> you didn't exercise power over your will. <laughs> you blurted out some stuff that shouldn't have came out of your mouth. Man. I'm talking about some very colorful words. <laughs> You would have been ashamed had, had, had a preacher or somebody been standing there. Amen. Amen. I, I didn't mean, I didn't mean, see the fact that the matter is, she is still in you and you haven't mastered it yet. Amen. Amen. And like the Bible says, sweet and bitter water shouldn't come out of the same faucet. Right. In other words, fresh water and salt water don't come out of the same faucet. Amen. So you got to get control. Of your will, so that you won't say even that bad stuff, even when you by yourself. Amen. Amen. Lord, no. The devil is there. God is there. Yeah. See, just because the preacher there, you think you got by? Mm -hmm. The preacher don't have a heaven or hell to put you in. Yeah. Just because there was no person of authority there, there was no person there that you admired or whatever, you feel that you got by. But no. The majestic God was there. Amen. He overheard that in the majestic God said that we're going to have to try this again. Amen. Because you still haven't learned. Right. Did you not know that God allowed you to go through tests over and over again until you learn? Because there was something that you go through that if you don't learn, it can get you into trouble. Amen. Is that okay? Because yes. just about everything that we do in life is <coughs> based upon our free will. And if you don't gain mastery over your free will, you're going to find yourself in life doing things that could have been avoided. Now I want you to think just for a minute. Well, that's some things that you have done just recently that could have been avoided. I mean, everybody can raise their hand to that. I mean, some things that you did just recently and you look back and say, I, you know, I, got, I, I could avoid, avoid it, doing that or what have you, and it got me in trouble. 
You know, it started an argument between me and my friend, an argument between me and my wife, an argument with my boss on the job and what have you. But when you learn how to cause your will to be subject to you, and you're not subject to your will, when the boss or your employer says something to you, you may not like it. But yet it's still, you will not to retaliate. At home, when my wife says something to me, I say something to her. I will not to react, retaliate or give a rebuttal. You know why? Because I can remember probably 10 years ago how by me having a rebuttal just blew the house up. I was walking through the house not speaking to one another. Oh yes, husband and wife can live in the same house and be walking by one another and won't even say nothing to one another. Don't tell me that it don't happen because it will. See, but because you didn't have will over your mouth. You had to have the last word. He ain't gonna say that to me. She ain't gonna say that to me. I'm, I, I'm saying something. You, 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 you gonna just tap the house for that? Amen. Amen. See, it don't make you a less dad, you know what it makes you wise. Right? Amen. Only think that she's gonna be over me, huh? Right. And that stuff leads to divorce in some cases. Yeah. See, because one or the other had not learned how to shut them out. The Bible said the woman is supposed to submit herself to the husband. Mm -hmm. The Bible also said that the man should love his wife and he love himself. Yeah. So both of us have something to prove. Yeah. I got to prove can I love my wife like I love myself. And she got to be submissive to me. She don't have to be submissive to me because I say it. Because the word of God says it. Amen. And it's nothing, it's nothing better to, for a man to be you know, nice to his wife and his wife to be nice to him. But you got to be able to have power over your will to achieve that. There were some things that I said 10 years ago. I wouldn't dare say now. Some things that, that could hurt my feeling. I could rub it the wrong way. It's going downstairs and turn the television on. Hey, what harm? And then, let me say this. Do you think, yo, listen to me can't be very careful. Though. Do you think a woman that you done pissed off is going to be cooking you done? <laughs> Come on, man, talk to me. <laughs> See, if you maintain your cool, <laughs> you had some dinner. And all you had to have that you don't have mastery over your will. <laughs> Give the Lord a hand. Does anybody understand what I'm talking about? <laughs> 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 Even the kind of thing that we overlook. Yes. To the Lord, when Jesus died on the cross, he died for the whole man, spirit, soul, and body. So you got to, you got to have it all in check. Now let's turn to 2 Samuel. The eleventh chapter. 2 Samuel, the eleventh chapter. When you get there, say amen. And I'm going to start with the first verse, and I'm going to read five of those verses. And I'm talking about King David. 2 Samuel, the eleventh chapter, verses 1 through 5. And it came to pass after the year was expired, at the time when kings go forth to battle, that David sent Joab and his servants with him, and all Israel. And they destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Rabbi. But David tarried still at Jerusalem, so David didn't go out with his men to battle. Okay? So he sent Joab, who was the captain of his army, and they went off to battle. And they were battling the Ammonites. Notice the second verse. And it came to pass in the evening tide that David arose from off of his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house, and from the roof he saw a woman washing herself. And the woman was very beautiful to look upon. And David sent and inquired after the woman, and one said, Is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? And David sent messengers and took her, and she 
came in unto him, and he lay with her, for she was purified from her uncleanness, and she returned unto her house. <coughs> Excuse me. And the woman conceived and said, and told David, and said, I am with child. See, first of all, David didn't go out to battle. So in the evening, tied, he went up on his roof. And there was this beautiful woman upon the roof, and she was, you know, naked, didn't have any clothes on, taking a bath or whatever. And David saw that. Now, if he had power over his wheel, his wheel was told him, go back into the house. <laughs> go back into the house. See, he was the king. He had several wives at the time. You didn't need this man's wife. And so, what he did when he saw the woman, how beautiful she was, he sent messengers to the woman's house and had the woman brought over to his house. Not only did he have the woman brought over to his house, he slept with the woman and she conceived. See, the fact that it matter either, my will is not, I'm not subject to my will, my will is subject to me. So then, he should have turned around and walked on back into the house. And you tell me that's the Old Testament preacher. Well, <laughs> let's bring it to this contemporary age in which we live. You married? You got a wife at home. Woman, you got a husband at home. And when some man flirt with you and what have you, instead of you putting him in his place, you, you kind of go along with it because it's cute. <laughs> so you see what it does, it, it, it causes trouble. Yeah. So instead of the king going back inside of his house and leaving that woman alone, he laid with her and she conceived. Now the baby died and God sent a prophet, the prophet Nathan to David, and God said, I saw what you did. And I'm going to raise up trouble in your own house. Why? Because David gave in to his will. And did you not know that David had a son by the name of Absalom? And Absalom tried to take David's life? All of that stem, and we're talking about when Absalom tried to take David's life, we're talking about 40 years later. Because when God says something, it's surely going to happen. I don't care how many years pass. So, 40 years had passed in Absalom. He, 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 he tried to take his father's life. But God said that, you know, I saw what you did, and I'm going to raise up trouble in your house. So that's why it's, that's why these things are put in the Bible. To give us example after example. This is why it's paramount for you to gain mastery over your will, because the devil is going to use it. To try to get you to make choices that are going to be detrimental to your life and to your soul. So you see how the enemy, and, and, and back in those days, they didn't know the enemy as well as we do. Because we have writing about him. Okay? But they did. But anyway, he knew that it was wrong. But he didn't have mastery over his will. We're talking about King David. And you're talking about, oh, well, that's the Old Testament, the Old Testament. You know, well, well, what about now? The next time, you're at the grocery store, you're out of the bottom, what have you, you married, you got a boyfriend, going steady, what have you, and someone of the opposite sex come along and try to flirt with you, what do you do? Do you entertain that? And you put the person in the place. And you know, like, you say, like, okay, fine, you know, thank you, sir, and go on about your business. So thank you, ma'am, and go on about your business. Have I had the opportunity to mess around in, in 35, going on 36 years this month? Of course. But you know what I do? I weigh the cost. I weigh the cost. What do you mean, preach about weighing the cost? I look at this, and I look at eternity. I don't have to look back at it again. That's right. See, because eternity outweighs that. There is no way in the world I'm going to lose my soul for that. Amen. Hmm? Amen. Because I have learned to master my will in that regard. Can I, I, want, I want to tell you something. In almost 36 years, 
I ain't never known a woman. That's the thing you haven't been with another. Do the devil put on your mind? Of course he does. See, but it's up to me whether or not I yield to it. See, I'll be a last of it. No, that don't have a problem in my mind. Liar. Because the devil real. He'll put it on your mind, but you don't have to yield to it. Because when you got master over, master over your will, you don't have to give in to that kind of stuff. Let's look at something else. Are we okay? I'm not helping anybody. Let's look at Matthew, the 26th chapter. Matthew 26, start with the 38th verse. Then saith he unto them, talking about Jesus, my soul is exceedingly, exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tell ye here and watch with me this next day that Jesus is going to be crucified. So Jesus right now and his disciples, they are in the garden of Gethsemane. And Jesus is know very well that the next day he's going to be crucified on the cross. Now notice in the 39th verse. And he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou will. Not my will, but let your will be done. Amen. Now the man was getting ready to be crucified the next day. Now, do you think God would have argued and fussed with Jesus if Jesus had said, Father, I can't go through this? Do you think the Father would have argued and fussed with Jesus? But Jesus said, Father, not my will, but let your will be done. Jesus understood the urgency and the importance of him going to the cross. Otherwise, men never would have been redeemed back unto God. So he understood the urgency. So he said, not my will, but let your will be done. In other words, he had power over his own will. So he showed us how it's done. Watch this. The 40th verse. And he cometh unto his disciples, and findeth them asleep, and saith unto Peter, What? Could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away again the second time and prayed, saying, O oh, Father, O oh, my Father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. And so you see Jesus here. He was acting as the Son of Man, not the Son of God. Okay? He had the Holy Spirit in him. As a matter of fact, he had the Holy Spirit without a man. <coughs> See, we have the Holy Spirit by this, but nevertheless, Jesus is trying to show us in Scripture what it takes to have power over your will. He was getting ready to die. He had a body that got tired that needed food. So he was saying, Father, I understand your urgency. I understand the importance. So it's not about my will. But Father, let your will be done. And so the next time, when your flesh rise up and tries to cause you to do something that you know ain't right, what are you going to say? You know it's wrong. You know it'll cause trouble. What are you going to say? You can't say, the devil made me do it. Because he can't. It's a matter of you saying no. Notice he said that, you know, watch that you have a night of temptation because temptation don't come. Mm -hmm. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So what are you feeding more? His body or your spirit? Mm -hmm. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against my God. Now let's look at something regarding the Apostle Paul. 
Let's look at Acts the, uh, the 21st chapter, 20th chapter. Acts 20. And let, let's look at verses 22 through 24. Now, in these examples that I've been giving you, they're put here for a reason. And the reason being so that you can read them and get encouragement to see that I'm not just going through this by myself. Others have gone through it and, and, and really succeeded. So ask the 20th chapter, start with the 22nd verse. And now behold, this is the Apostle Paul. And now behold, I go bound in the spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the thing that shall befall me there except that the Holy Ghost witness in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. Notice in the 24th verse. But none of these things move me, neither count my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. So the Holy Spirit was telling Paul, I'm revealing to Paul that when you go to Jerusalem, trouble is awaiting you there. But Paul said, well, you know, I understand that. But I'm going to finish my course with joy. They can do what they will to me. I have power over my will, even though I understand that there was a mob that waited for me to change my life. But nevertheless, I realized that when I finish my course, I have eternal life waiting for me with Jesus Christ, my Lord and my Savior. So the Apostle Paul is showing that he had power over his will, even though he knew that there was somebody waiting in Jerusalem to take his life. You wouldn't even go near a place if you thought that somebody was there to cause you harm. You wouldn't do it, and guess what? You know, I wouldn't do now, unless I'm being led by the Spirit of God, oh I, I don't have anything to prove. But if the Holy Spirit tells me to go to a certain place, and if He tells me that you know, like that, that there's going to be some trouble, but you know what? I can look and understand that He's not going to leave me nor forsake me, so that I will be able then to have power over my will and go. Let me show you something else. How many of you have heard of the prophet called Agabus? Let's look at Acts 21. Prophet Agabus. And I believe, you know, if I'm not mistaken, in the book of Acts, Agab Agabus prophesied accurately twice. So when Agabus spoke, his, his prophecies were accurate. So Acts the 21st chapter, verses 10 through 14. Acts, this, Acts the 21st chapter, verses 10 through 14. Now watch this. I'm almost finished, y'all. And as we tarried there many days, the Apostle Paul speaking, there came down from Ju Judea a certain prophet named Agabus. And when he was come unto us, he took Paul's girdle, which is a belt, and bound his own hands and feet, and said, Thus saith the Holy Ghost, so shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man that owneth this girdle or belt, and shall deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. Notice in the twelfth verse. And when we heard these things, both we and they of that place besought him not to go up to Jerusalem. They were begging Paul not to go to Jerusalem because they knew that trouble awaited him there. Notice the thirteenth verse. Then Paul answered, What mean ye to weep? and to break mine heart. For I am ready not to be bound only, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. And when he would not be persuaded, we ceased saying, Thy will, the will of the Lord be done. So Paul was not going to be persuaded not to go, even though Agabus, after the prophet, said, you know, trouble waiting for you. And they tried their best to persuade him not to go. But Paul went in the way that was because he had power over his own will. 
Now let me close by saying this. Every man has a free will. So if you get to heaven, it will be because you exercise your will and chose God over Satan. You are the only one that can make this choice. So please learn how to gain the mastery over your will. This is not going to be something that's, that's going to happen overnight. But as you grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you will learn how to do things that you didn't think was possible. And one of the things possible is to obtain and maintain check over your free will. And a lot of things that you normally would do, you wouldn't do. You would avoid because you have mastery over your will. Now give the Lord a hand, somebody. Is that okay? Anybody good? Amen.